Greetings, folks. You're about to experience a relatively complicated Newton's Second Law problem with rotational motion and translational motion. Enjoy. So here's our problem. We've got this ball. has a string wrapped around it. The string goes up over a pulley attached to a hanging mass. Uh, we know what the ball's radius is in relationship to the radius of the pulley. We know the various masses. We know the angle of the incline. We know the moment of inertia of the pulley and the moment of inertia of the ball, both about their central axes. What we're looking for is the acceleration of the ball's center of mass. So I've done a little animation for you. So we need to write down relationships that are true. Probably the easiest way to go, at least to start with anyway, is to simply use Newton's laws on the hanging mass. Start with a free body diagram. We're going to have tension up and gravity down. Summing up the forces, we have T positive Mg negative equals Ma. Um, solving for T1, we come up with this relationship. Two unknowns, we don't know T, we don't know A, we're going to need another relationship. Before we go after that other relationship, it's important to notice that the acceleration of the hanging mass will be the same as the acceleration of the string. Um, and so I've actually written it that way. This probably seems like kind of a bizarre point to make, but it's actually going to be kind of important later on. In any case, um, I've additionally um, identified this relationship as equation A for reference later. Next equation we're going to acquire is by summing the torques on the pulley. So if you have a massive pulley, the tension on either side is going to be different. So the torque values are going to end up having a similar look but different subscripts. Um, T2 is going to generate a torque that's going to make the body want to uh, angularly accelerate counterclockwise, which means it's going to be a positive torque. T1 is going to end up motivating the body to want to angularly accelerate clockwise, so it's going to generate a negative torque. And the overall motion is going to be clock, uh, counterclockwise, so alpha is going to be positive. We can put in the moment of inertia uh, for the pulley. And we can get rid of alpha by noticing that the acceleration of the string which is the same as the acceleration of the edge of the pulley, is going to end up equaling R alpha. And we can use that relationship to substitute the alpha out um, in terms of A of the string. Do a little canceling of R's, and we end up with what I'm calling equation B, second of the two equations. We've just picked up another unknown, though, so we need yet one more equation. So we've dealt with the hanging mass and the pulley. Um, next is the ball. Um, we can either sum the torques about the center of mass or we can sum up the forces on the ball. I'm going to deal with the forces first. So we start off with a free body diagram. Normal force, gravity, frictional force, tension T2. All Notice that all of the forces are actually identified where they act on the body. You need to do this when you're dealing with rotational motion. Put in the axes. I didn't break mg into its component parts, but you can see that, that the component along the line of the acceleration is going to be mg uh, sine theta. So you have f in the positive direction, you have t2 in the positive direction, you have mg sine theta in the negative direction, and this body is going to be accelerating in this direction, I've taken that to be the negative direction, so I've unadmitted the negative sign. Here is Newton's second law, translational style, for the center of mass of the ball. Unfortunately, our other relationships, the acceleration terms have been that of the string, whereas here we're looking at the acceleration of the center of mass of the ball. We need to relate the two, which I've done here, the consequence of which is the acceleration of the center of mass of the ball is equal to half the acceleration of the string. We're going to put that bit of information into this relationship. 
and it's going to give us what I'm calling equation C. So we thought we had enough equations, except unfortunately this last equation has incorporated the frictional force, which is still one more unknown, which means we need still one more equation. Um, and we're going to get that by summing up the torques about the center of mass of the ball. Um, normal force acts through the center of mass. Gravity acts through the center of mass. They're not going to produce torques. Um, R perpendicular for T and F is going to be little r in both cases. And if you remember, the radius of the ball was related to the radius of the pulley by two-thirds r. So instead of using little r, I'm going to do it in terms of the radius of the pulley because all of our other relationships are in terms of the radius of the pulley. Um, the frictional force is going to end up motivating the system to want to angularly accelerate counterclockwise, so it'll be a positive torque. Uh, tension is tending to make the body want to rotate about the center of mass clockwise, so it's a negative torque. And the ball in general is angularly accelerating counterclockwise, so it will be a positive angular acceleration. We can put in the moment of inertia um, for the ball. All we're going to need is to figure out what alpha for the ball is. The string is attached to the outer edge of the ball, and the acceleration of the string and the outer edge of the ball are going to be the same. So if we take uh, our contact point as a fixed point, and we think of the angular acceleration of the ball about that point as being alpha, you can see that the acceleration of the string is going to be 2r times alpha. Or alpha is going to end up equaling a of the string divided by 2r. If we additionally write r in terms of the radius of the pulley, we can put that information in here also and come up with what the acceleration of the ball is in terms of what's going on with the acceleration of the string and the radius of the pulley. So going back to the torque equation that we were dealing with where we didn't know what alpha was, we can put in what alpha is. We can do a little judicious canceling, do a little bit of math, and come up with what I'm calling equation D. So at this point, we have a series of relationships. Um, we've gotten them from summing up the forces on the hanging mass, from summing up the torques about the axis of the pulley, from summing up the forces on the ball along the line of the acceleration, and from summing up the torques about the center of mass of the ball. And if we combine that with the fact that the acceleration of the ball's center of mass and the acceleration of the, of the string are related thusly, if we combine all of that, we can manipulate these relationships to come up with, a, with a, an expression for the acceleration of the center of mass of the ball. So here I've done all of that. I've taken equation B right here. Um, uh, equation A as an expression for T1, so I've taken that expression and I've substituted it in for T1. I've manipulated to come up with an expression that says T2 is equal to a bunch of stuff, and I've called it equation E. I've taken equation C, which has an F in it. Equation D says F equals a bunch of stuff. So I've taken that stuff and I've substituted it in for F, and I've solved, and I've come up with a new expression that says T2 is equal to a bunch of stuff, and I've called that equation F. The bunch of stuff in equation E and the bunch of stuff in equation F, both of which were equal to T2, I've equated, I've manipulated, and I've come up with a new expression or an expression for the acceleration of the string. And finally, I've taken the acceleration of the string and I've determined what the acceleration of the center mass of the ball is. This great flurry of math that you've, you've seen in the last 30 seconds or so is actually not all that important. What's really important is that you be able to sum the forces and sum the torques on the various individual pieces and that you're able to relate the acceleration of the string and the acceleration of the center of mass um, and the angular acceleration of the various pieces in the system um, 
And that's where the physics really is, is involved. And those are the things that I would be looking for if I gave you a problem like this on your test. Anyway, hope you enjoyed it. That's it.